Are you ready to scale your business in a way that's aligned with your soul and profitable? I'm Casey Rossi, a business and leadership coach. I've been a full-time entrepreneur for 30 years and love business. I help conscious leaders increase their impact and optimize their lives. Join me each week for tips and deep conversations on cultivating confidence, increasing your visibility, elevating your vibration, and leading with purpose without burning out. Let's go. My guest today is Susan Burrell. Susan is an intuitive healer and a spiritual guide. She is the author of Live Your Empowered Life, a 30-day journey book. I love my conversation with Susan. We really talk about how you come to know when you're a conduit for spirit. Uh, We define deep listening. We talk about some obstacles that come up when we need to shed some old paradigms and let go of stories that are no longer serving us before we step into light leadership and so many more things. So Susan has been counseling and supporting people and transforming from the inside out for over 25 years, and she has a master's degree in consciousness. But moreover, her methods are proven because she has lived this journey to empowerment. I hope you enjoy this episode. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. I can't wait to dive in. I was honored to be a guest on your podcast. I love these collabs because we just get to deepen a relationship and it takes podcasting from being transactional to really being about connection and deep conversation. So I'm really thrilled to have you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be a guest here on Women Developing Brilliance. And I want to dive right in with a juicy question that's been on my mind. And I'm very curious about when you knew that you were a conduit for spirit. You know, it's so funny because as you were getting ready to ask that question, I started getting this energy download that that happens to me. So, all right. So I've always been a spiritual quester. I I didn't understand what that was, you know, in my, in my youth, you know, in my twenties, I had, I was going for an acting career and then I was doing my spiritual development on the side. You know, the two weren't really, I thought connected at that time. And as I got older, I realized, oh, absolutely. It isn't what I'm focusing on doing in the world. It's how do I want to focus on being? And so when I really focused on that, you know, with lots of having to dig up old roots of belief systems and holy moly, I didn't know I believed that about myself, all that garbage. I'm just being so polite here on your show, Uh, (laughs) all that garbage. And I went into uh, a lot of different spiritual trainings And I became a spiritual practitioner of a philosophy called science of mind. And it's all about how our beliefs and our emotions that get attached to those beliefs create our reality and lots of quantum physics. And so as I was doing that and I began to teach, I realized that I need, I wanted personally to go deeper And so then I did a four-year accredited master's program in consciousness. So I have a master's in consciousness. Nice. true? It's true (laughs) in in the physical world, but I don't know that we ever really master consciousness. This is, Mm -hmm. is, uh, that's a whole nother conversation, Casey. But during that program, during that classwork and at a retreat I was at, and we were, there was a deep meditation we were in and I heard really clearly you are a conduit for spirit. You are a conduit for spirit. I was like, holy mm-hmm. moly, what the hell? And my ego, mm-hmm. you know, was like, oh my God, that could be like a really cool thing. You know, my ego starts going, wow, let's do that. And so I have to, I had to kind of watch that. And I kind of was like, yes. And the, by being a conduit for spirit, anybody's that, by the way, everybody listening, you are a conduit for spirit. We all are because what I mean by that is there, there is always, every one of us is a unique divine spark of a higher source energy system that is, that is indescribable. And some people like to call it God or 
Allah or, but it's so much bigger that we can't comprehend. Human beings mm -hmm. can't. But that is the conduit. When you when you open your your heart, get your mind, which the ego is attached to in the brain, right? The ego is the the monkey mind. When you can move that over to the side enough and allow that infinite wisdom that's always there to to connect to your heart, then all your answers are right within you. And so that to me is what the conduit is. It's a, it's a it's a well, conduit technically is about an avenue, right? But for me, it's also about becoming a vessel, a receptive vessel for information, for love, for wisdom, for creativity. That's how our creative ideas drop in is through that conduit. And the biggest thing is to get that mind and the ego and all the beliefs that are sometimes in the head, but oftentimes anchored in the body. Absolutely. Everything Absolutely. Is, yeah. I am resonating with everything you've said. I'm wondering if you had any hesitations and if you did, how long of a period before you decided to accept that whisper or that invitation that you are a conduit for spirit so that's a very good question, Casey. You know, I think I heard the call, I call it the call, you know, and when I was like 17, 18, because I started investigating spiritual ideologies and religions and philosophies around that time. But again, so this goes back to developing your brilliance, right? In my 20s, 30s, 40s. <laughs> 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 I, I didn't really know myself. I, I was looking for love outside of myself instead of within myself. And, and my spiritual journey has definitely taught me that love starts within you and any blocks you've had put on you patternings you've had, you have to remove. Right. So I heard it young. Then I kind of went, Oh no, that can't be true. You yeah. know? And it was interesting because every time I turned around, I was constantly seeking and then teaching friends, anybody that, you know, I could have been the person standing on the soapbox on the corner telling yeah. them, Hey, look what I learned. You guys, we can all do this together, you know, but, and I, that's when I realized I, I need to accept that this is part of my life purpose this time around, that it's my mission. Mm -hmm. And, and then I think I shared with you during the pan when the pandemic shut down again, I was, I was in meditation asking what is mine to do, you know, because it, it's not, I, I got really clear. It's not me running around trying to heal everybody because that just makes you exactly absolutely exhausted. And I heard very clearly part of my purpose is to activate light leaders Mm -hmm. So being teaching everybody to become that conduit of spirit, to connect within to the love that you already are, the peace that you already are, find your wisdom, and then be that at, in, a, and it doesn't even have to be in a leadership role. You know what I mean? You don't have to be center, Absolutely. center stage, but just be that in your life. Absolutely. You mentioned the monkey mind and mind being attached to ego and being that obstacle to that open divine channel. What are some tips that you can share with the listeners to help sidestep that monkey mind or tame it so you can be more open to that receptivity? So I am a big proponent of journaling and to me, but not journaling, dear diary, here's what I did today, but journaling to get the garbage out, the, the, get the muck, get the stuff that's in the mind that keeps distracting us. You know, the bright and shiny story we want to go out and tell everybody about he did me wrong or this happened at work to journal that out with intention that you don't want to keep it in here because that clears at the mind, but it also clears the, the wisdom center of the heart to then be allowed to, to say, no, this is what you, you're asking for. This is what you need to hear. So journaling is huge. Meditation is really big. And if, if you're not a meditator, you know, and people call it mindfulness now, isn't that a lovely little gentle word for mm -hmm. 
eons of meditation that it, it isn't about necessarily calming the mind so that it's completely quiet, but getting within yourself. I, I do a lot of guided meditations that show up on insight timer. It's an app mm-hmm. you can have on your phone, but, and I find that people that haven't meditated consistently, the guided meditations help them. And once they go back to a guided meditation, they, they get value out of, then they can begin the practice. And one of my favorite authors and kind of like my own internal guru is Michael Singer. He wrote an amazing book called The Untethered Soul. Mm. And, and he's got a podcast now. And I was listening. And one of the things he talks about all the time is in meditation, the, the mistake we make is we think our mind is supposed to be silent. And he said, no, meditation is where you drop in to observe what you're experiencing. So observing how the mind is telling the story, observing how the heart hurts or shuts down or so the, so meditation at, to develop the seat of the observer or you, or you mm-hmm. zoom out so you can watch what's going on and not be reactive. Absolutely. And, and then you have a better choice on how you deal with your issues in life. I see a lot of resistance now, especially because we're in this information age and this, this high technology, and there's so many stimuluses and distractions for people that I'm often seeing, I think really even more so it's rising to the surface of people thinking that they do need another input in order to tune within. And I think that those AIDS are exactly that, just like you referenced in the beginning, this is something that could help you to see the difference between like Netflix and all the other external stimuluses and somebody kind of guiding you to pay attention to your breath or tune into your heart or just observe and be that observer. And I think that's amazing, but I'm wondering what you see between that gap of feeling that they need an external aid and then trusting themselves to actually turn within and eliminate distractions. Well, you just said the big, the big word that a lot of people don't comprehend or even were taught and it's trust, trust. Mm -hmm. And, and for those of us that have had a young experience of um, being abandoned or harmed energetically, emotionally, maybe even physically, the, the T word trust is, is, is like non-existent, you know, it's a mental component. It's not a heartfelt thing. And and in order to really trust yourself, you have to trust your heart. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And what's coming to mind for me is what do you think is the most powerful tool to transform trauma into trust? Well, there's several out there right now. Meditation. It's so Meditation is really good because it's important to face your fears because in facing your fears, you can see, oh, wow, that really was a trauma in my past or, oh, wow, that future thing I'm afraid of isn't, is it true? It's not going to happen. So, so the meditation can help you get aligned enough, right? Mm -hmm. To really see and hear what, what's really true. I'm sorry. Casey, I just, I did not really answer the first question about the distraction. So Mm -hmm. a lot of people find uh, all the devices are the thing they want to focus on. And when, uh, so here's what I notice when I'm looking at my phone or on Facebook, just kind of, Oh, what's going on today or what, uh, you know, we're starting to read headlines. I realize, okay, that's, that's distracting me because those things outside of you are not necessary. Okay. This is really important. Everybody, what is outside of you is not necessarily the truth. Mm -hmm. There's another T word truth. Now the truth that external sources want to say is real is really, again, a concept, a man-made concept that some egos got together and said, Ooh, wouldn't this be cool to like create havoc with this headline or whatever. Absolutely. Now you may think that it's true because you read it in a source, right? You may think it's true. People are starting to amp up about the COVID variants. You know, I'm getting phone calls. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
And what's important is when you learn how to trust your inner authority, your inner wisdom, then you can trust your own truth. And again, we all came in as individualized sparks of light. Mm -hmm. And so what's true for me may not be true for you, Casey. Mm -hmm. it, there, there can be a kind of a global yes, this is true. But individually, it's so important to not be distracted and to listen within to really what your truth is and, and then trust it. Otherwise, why am I, why am I becoming somebody who's activating light leaders? I mean, really, who wants to make that stuff up? I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. And I, I love the fact that there could be an overarching global. Yes. And yes. then an individual specific what's in alignment for you. I too believe we each come in with kind of our own stamped microfiche specific for our soul of different things we have to go through for our karmic destiny. We're on the same page there. And so you mentioned the listening piece and you talked about like listening to our own inner wisdom. I think that's amazing. I know a big part of your work with clients is also deep listening. And I'm wondering how you define deep listening. Okay, so deep listening is kind of what we're doing right here, you know. Deep listening is, get, oh, wow, I'm getting another energy hit. Okay, so deep listen, listening is, a, is, again, about moving out of your way, right? So when you're in a conversation with someone, deep listening means you, you, you aren't waiting for them to finish so you can say what you think about that or fix them, or tell them what your experience was that was so calm. Deep listening is really centering in your heart and receiving what the individual wants you to hear. It's also going deep within your heart with yourself, like I've said, with yourself to hear what it is wisdom, source energy, spirit, alignment with love, whatever whatever you want to talk about, really wants you to remember, to understand. So one of my spiritual practices this year began because I did a session with a woman called, her name is Dr. Tracy Johnson. She does heart scans and, and I think her site is open heart. Anyway, she talks about your heart wisdom has a name. You can name it. You, and so you deeply listen, what is the name? And then you can at, you can have conversations with that heart. And so mm -hmm. I, I brought that into my spiritual practice and daily I ask my heart was, I, I don't even ask anymore. I used to say, what do I need to know? Cause then I was going to go do something about it. Now I, and I understand that I just need to hear. So I, I say to my heart wisdom every morning, I am listening. And That's then beautiful. I just, I sit quietly and whatever comes in, I write it down. And often it is affirming to me that I am okay, just as I am. And I'm in the right place at the right time doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. That's absolutely beautiful. I think it's a wonderful invitation to the listeners to embody that if it resonates with them. So much power in that. And I think it's a great way to start the practice of tuning within self-trust understanding intuition, bypassing the mind and dropping down into the heart space. It does so much and it's simple. It's simple. I think we oftentimes overcomplicate things. And so I, I love the beauty and that simplicity and I can feel the guidance. Like I can feel a stir, even just listening to that. Like there's so much guidance in that nugget of wisdom that you shared. So thank you for that. That's awesome. This episode is brought to you by Know Thyself and Lead, my free mini training that unlocks the top three secrets that you need to joyfully thrive. You'll learn the number one way to fuel action so that you're never stuck or procrastinating again. You'll crack the code and unveil your specific aligned purpose for more flow and ease, and you'll discover the way to propel you further faster. You can binge watch all three trainings at once or at your leisure. Either way, you'll want to sign up and dive right in. Access Know Thyself and Lead at kcrossi.com slash lead. That's kcrossi.com slash lead. Now, please enjoy the show. I'm interested in what the biggest obstacle that you see when it comes to letting go of old stories and old paradigms 
and old ways that don't serve us because in order to make space for that light leadership, we have to let go. So I'm wondering what that big obstacle is that you often see. It is feeling unworthy, feeling devalued, feeling, uh, having no self-esteem. A- and that's my personal bugaboo. I mean, I, I, my spiritual practice usually comes back to on a different level that, oh my God, I don't feel good enough. Why don't I feel good enough to do this or say this or be here? Or, and, and I just think that especially for women, it's not something we were, mo- it, w- it wasn't modeled for us frequently, generationally. So, mm-hmm. so women of today, I, I just want your listeners to know, we carry our generational lineage, our ancestral lineage. And so if your great, great, great grandmother was t- treated like garbage, that no self-esteem, I'm, I am not worthy, I'm unvaluable, comes down as a wounding through to you. So in uh, addressing that within yourself and recognizing that, wow, today I really don't feel worth it. I just don't feel val- valuable. The, the thing, the good news is it's not all yours, right? That, yeah. that feeling of unworthiness, it comes from a generational, and most women have this right now. When we And societal. Up, it I is think societal. it's multi-layered. And here's the thing, like I have the majority of the people that I have met over my almost five decades on the planet have this wounding. I mean, this is like, who fed us this lie and why do we keep eating it? Do you want me to answer that, Casey? Yes, answer it. Okay, so the 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 lie that women are chattel are not valued started eons ago when we shifted like I'm I'm talking like pre Greek like Egyptian times when we shifted from the goddess what do I want to say religion kind of thing where the the the, the feminine the divine feminine was active at that point again and it was worshipped. It was the, the place of knowledge. It was the place of creativity. It was the place where high priestesses were, were valued for their wisdom, for their alchemic magic they could perform, for their... And kings would go to have sex with one of the high priestess. It was part of the culture so that the, 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 the river Nile would flow. So Mm -hmm. the plants would grow. So there would be prosperity in the land and because the divine feminine was revered. Mm -hmm. And at some point, Hmm. Roman time, maybe, huh? The, the divine masculine came in and what happened is it began to become distorted. And this is what we have in some sacred texts that lots of people in our country like to say is the truth mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where it is about men over women. It is about an eye for an eye. It is about, they did me wrong. Let's go slaughter everyone. Yeah. And we're going to take all the women with us. So they can't have any more of them, but we'll multiply through these women and we'll have more of us. We saw this in the ethnic cleansing in Serbia and Croatia in the 80s, where those women were being put in rape camps. Okay, this is how twisted the divine masculine became. Mm -hmm. And so women throughout the ages were considered chattel they were they were they scared men because they did have this mystical ability to create they also had this mystical ability to really listen to their intuition that men were turning that off Mm -hmm. if they listened to their heart and the heart said oh good god don't go kill that village the other men would kill them do you know what i'm saying they they had to like shut down their intuition so i'm deeply grateful now that the divine feminine is activated again over the last few years. It's part of what we're witnessing, I believe, Casey, in the patriarchy globally crumbling because it, it, it's almost like it became such a hardened, I see it as a statue, right? Such mm-hmm. a hardened idea that there is a top down, there is a pyramid of success, right? And the guy mm-hmm. at the top 
gets everything while all the people, the minions at be- below barely survive at poverty level, right? They get crumbs. Right. So this whole pyramid patriarchy is crumbling. That's what we're witnessing, not only in our country, but in others. It, 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 it energetically, I think is also what is connected to the earth having issues. Not that the earth Absolutely. is going to kick us off and go, oh, forget it, you leeches. But there's <laughs> all, all the different um, environmental things happening, the flooding that's happening in, in Europe, the the fires, the, the earthquakes, the heat waves. There is no doubt that we are shifting. There are massive changes, massive cleansings, awakenings and blessings coming on the flip side of that as well. I'm so very curious because I also feel the feminine rising. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing light workers being called to step into their own power. And then here's what I'm also noticing. There's a wobble. There's an identity wobble in feminine leaders where they feel the call. And one day they have this goddess warrior energy and they're like, yes, I got it. This is amazing. I finally like did the work and I've traversed the territory. And then literally 24 hours later, it can be like, shit, what just happened? I have no um, security. I'm doubting myself again. Like it is literally this thing and it's, it's happening so rapidly. And I think whenever there is an upswing to step into the capacity of a new vibration, there's mm-hmm. going to be a wobble. How do we yes. deal with that? And that's a really good word to say wobble because it's not a broken thing. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you, you weren't empowered and now you have to work double time to get it back. It, it, uh, so wh- as you were talking, Casey, what I saw was this, I actually have a, a picture of this woman on a, a card that I drew from a pack called Sacred Rebels, and she's going up a spiral in, in water. And so so in rec- reclaiming, not only for ourselves individually, that inner empowerment, that value, that I am worth it thing, there's also, we're doing it for the entirety we're doing it for all of humanity, men and women. And so there's this, this spiral that if we allow it to be gentle, we, we can trust, on the T word again, we can trust that we'll come back to that awareness. So when it, when it seems like it left, it's just the ego, you know, mind fucking us and, mm-hmm. and coming in and just going, nanner, nanner, nanner. It, 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 it's not real. That what's, What's real is what your inner wisdom, heart wisdom, your truth is. And to allow, and I'm talking for me now, Casey, to allow me, to allow myself, to allow yourself to do that, to make it a gentle spiraling up. Because the thing Mm. that's happening right now with the divine feminine reactivated is it's not taking any shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like people wake up now, not because something bad's going to happen, although it it can, it will, but because humanity, not just me or you, Casey, or the people that come to work with us, but humanity, this is why the pandemic was global. Humanity was being called to transmute. And so that, that gentle spiral is a transmutation and another transmutation and another transmutation. I love that visual. I literally got the chills. I think it takes some of like those bipolar feelings off the table. You yes. know? <laughs> yeah. Me, I go through it myself. I'm like, Oh God, today is the day I'm not <laughs> feeling good. Whoa. What happened? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. What exciting things do you have coming up in your world that we should know about? God bless you. And thank you for asking that. I have taken the entire summer off. I was doing lots of workshops. Um, I have two workshops called, are you a light leader? And, but come April, it, I like hit my wall and realized going back to distractions, I was doing all this X, all this work. And it was a distraction from what it is. I, I personally need to focus on, which was my inner healing again, my inner mental, emotional, and physical healing. So my intention is digging deep to to really see what else is holding my body back from being healthy. And so that I can then come back out into my business and do more 
more better work. Gosh, this is, I feel like we could talk for hours because this is a whole nother layer. It is something that I'm seeing repeatedly. I've experienced it. I see it in my clients where this call is there. We want to accept it. We go through some of those same repetitive patterns of putting in the work, putting out our best efforts, trying to do a great job at what we do because we love it. We're passionate about it. And there's a physical thing that comes up. So it's like, you're right. It's like, it's this spiraling up and seeing all of that residue that's still there. Like there's still something in our tissues that is arising before we can make that next step. And it's, it's a really, really interesting thing, but I'm seeing it a lot. In fact, I'm a part of a mastermind and one of the, the ladies just shared a picture of herself on Sunday. And she's like, this is me with my autoimmune flare up, you know, and I'm wondering how I embrace this new week in front of me, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, I'm seeing autoimmune being something that is a reoccurring thing, you know, in, in women leaders. I often wonder how correlated that is to boundary setting and using our voice. Uh, yes to all that. And it's interesting because I've been talking to other female entrepreneurs that are really amazing ass kickers. You know, they're just, let's get it done. And, and a lot of them are saying, I'm, I'm exhausted. I just hit the wall and I'm exhausted. And, and I'm tired of working so hard to try and bring in an income as an entrepreneur and nobody's knocking at my door. Yeah. How many times have I promoted? How many times have I done online workshops? How many times? And and so three things I want to say, Casey. The first one is, and this is what I'm working on. I'm a type one diabetic, have been for 30 years and I'm done. I'm like done having to have that. And so what, so what I know to be true, this is my truth. You guys can think about it, is the, the mental and the emotional, when we aren't dealing with that, when it happens, as it happens, it downloads energetically into the body and it creates disease. It can create an autoimmune disorder. It can create diabetes. It can create chronic fatigue syndrome. It can create whatever it is you want to create, right? Whatever it is we want to create so we can get, okay, for me, I'm speaking about me. When I became diabetic, it's because I was in an unhappy marriage. I wasn't listening to myself. I had I knew year three, it was not okay. It was not good for me. Year nine, I became diabetic. Wow. And then I stayed 28 years. Okay. What that's on me. So, but the thing is, I want everybody to know is when you begin to uh, listen deeply and, and address your emotions that um, this is my first point, address the emotions, really face that fear, face the, the hurt face that, because when you face your hurt, then in that vulnerability, there's your PowerPoint. Absolutely. Your Underscore that. Underscore that. I mean, this is truly where the gold lies when we're not afraid to face what's coming, what's being presented to us. Point two, I don't mean to hijack okay, your so point. Well, this is, but, but that is the feminine gift. That is what women, when we move into vulnerability, which we were always shamed about, don't be so emotional. What, why do you feel sorry for them? You know, they could go get a job too, or whatever it is, you know, that we were told for decades, eons. The the bigger thing is if we develop, if we develop a a disease, like in my case, it was, I was trying to be seen and heard. I was, I was really asking for someone to pay enough attention to me to go, oh my God, come on, honey, you need to leave that marriage. Yeah. Or my husband, you know, please, please, if I get sick enough, this was the thought I I revealed. If I get sick enough, then they'll love me. Mm -hmm. If I almost die, then they'll love me. Now this, I'm telling, I'm telling you guys this because I, I've tracked it to where at a very young age. And I think most women I taught myself not to be seen and heard. I I have bright red hair. I was born with bright red hair and and then freckles, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And at the time I grew up, it was not a popular thing. Yeah. And I stood out like a sore thumb and I was the kid everybody picked on and made fun of behind my back, in front of my face. And so then the idea of, okay, I can't be seen. I can't be this bright, shiny light. Mm -hmm. And most, I think women... We're taught generally generationally 
to not, you know, to be seen in, you know, in the fifties, it was the high heels and the, you know, cocktail when the husband comes home bull Mm -hmm. crap, but it, it, we were taught that we were taught that. And then in, when the women's movement activated again in the seventies, because it's always been active, you know, that's how we got the vote. There was a women's movement Mm -hmm. Uh, in the seventies, the women wanted to go to work. And, but what they did is they did it as a, a, as a masculine presence. They couldn't Mm -hmm. get into the boys club unless they did put on pants Mm -hmm. and had a bitch attitude to fit in with the boys. Now what's happening, I think, Casey, is we're really waking up, which is that that spiral, I guess, to being me. And that means being vulnerable. And that means, but we got to be okay with it first. You, you can't go into a board meeting all <sighs> vulnerable and maybe yeah. teary. I do, but you know, then people go, that's just Susan. But <laughs> But you have to do the work. You've got to go through your own layers. You can be inspired by someone else's journey, but you actually have to traverse your own path, stumble, fall, get scraped, get back up. I mean, you have to do the work. Well, a couple things. One, thank you so much for sharing vulnerably because there are going to be so many women that are going to relate to this and they're going to be able to self-identify and you being able to embrace your own vulnerability is healing in itself. So thank you for that. Oh, well, it's hard. I'm telling you guys, it, it is hard, but it, I, I know the value of it now, which I didn't use to, I used to shut it down. Yeah. And two, I think that one of the things that came from your childhood conditioning of, even though you were this bright light and you had this red hair and there was this silencing that happened. You totally transformed that. You were the alchemic, yes. you know, divine goddess for yourself because you see it now all over your branding. You see it in that beautiful empowered sign behind you in red, by the way. In red. You see it as one of your brand colors in red, by the way. And now all the things that you are committed to of freedom, brilliance, opulence, right? You have all of a sudden transformed something that can help other women do the same. So I'm lifting you up for that. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you. I so appreciate the acknowledgement. Yeah, absolutely. How can people learn more about you and step into your world? Woo! Uh, go to susanburrell.com. You'll, you can find out about the guided meditations there. I have my podcast, Empowering Chats with Susan Burrell. Also my book, Live a 30 day, live an empowered life. It's a 30 day workbook, everybody. You don't get it and read it and go, oh, there's my gem. No, you work it. And at the end, uh, it's interactive with my website. So there's cool, there's meditations and there's videos. So you're not really doing it by yourself. You're doing it with me. Um, SusanBurrell.com. And I have a, a free gift for your listeners. I'm because I do guide medita- meditations. I want to gift everybody a meditation called out of the box thinking and nice. for entrepreneurs. It's actually, I've had several people let me know that they got huge value out of seeing what their block was in their business and then moving it. So out of the box mm-hmm. meditation. And I guess I'll, I'll give Casey the link to that, or it's actually, if you sign up for my newsletter, I think we send it to you. Perfect. Awesome. I will make sure that those links are easily accessible in the show notes And I'm excited for that. I think we could all use a little bit of -of out-of-the-box thinking. We can all use some guidance on how to dissolve and acknowledge some of those blocks that are holding us back. So that's fantastic. And you left us with a lot today. And I really think this is almost one that people could listen to twice to really, (laughs) really get all of the nuggets of wisdom out. But if you were going to leave our listeners with a final piece of bright light wisdom, what would it be? I I want everybody to know that you're not broken. If you're feeling disempowered, that's not the truth of you. And to just take a moment to to breathe deeply into your heart and ask your heart, who am I? Mm. Who am I? And and the answer is always right there. And and I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to cheat and tell you what the answer most likely will be. Who you are is love. So to just be that. 
And awesome. Awesome. So if they're writing down their answer, they can always flip the page upside down. And in that fine print, there's going to be the key, the answer key. The key is love. I'm loving it. I'm really loving our time together. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. It's been an honor. Yeah. Until next time, my friend, breathe joy. I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Susan Burrell, The Empowered Life. If you wanted to leave feedback for the podcast, I would be grateful. And you can head to lovethepodcast.com slash brilliance. Lindsay Liu from the UK shares, must listen. I love this show. Casey asks just the perfect questions of her guests, and the result is a brilliant podcast. Thank you so much, Lindsay Liu. I appreciate you taking the time to share the feedback. And again, if you want to share some feedback, I would love to hear from you. You can head to lovethepodcast.com slash brilliance. Enjoy the day.